Hi, everyone. Welcome back to this California Music and Innovation Summit 2021. Hi, Suda. How are you doing today? Good morning, Jerome. It's in fact just the afternoon, isn't it? Really good. I can't believe it's Friday. It's day four already. It's crazy. Yeah, crazy. It's been so fast. The fourth day of the summit, the last one, but not least. Uh, today we'll uh, speak about smart venues and festivals. Uh, maybe a few words about yesterday. Yesterday it was all about data, insights and analytics. Um, and also it was the day of the demo day. The demo day was just amazing. The startup, the, the, job, the, the job they have done in only 10 weeks. I'm just impressed. You, what do you think about, about this? Because I know you, you helped them during this, this process, Suda. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was great to see them in action and to basically see all the hard work that they put in over the last few weeks um, and it all coming into fruition. The jury members, wow, what, what a panel. Um, so it was uh, good to hear their questions as well. Yeah, really effective. So, 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 so today we'll have around six, six panels, uh, around 30 speakers. Um, and as it's the last day, we have a closing showcase with the amazing our men in the field. So please stay connected. And Suda, uh, I'll let you introduce the first panel. Thanks, Jerome. Our first panel is the convergence of live and online events. Uh, our panelists are Jean-Marie Karadek from Bands in Town, Andrew Melchior from Third Space Agency, Cyril Sajak from Omni Live, and Anna Vogrik from Olympia Production. Our host today is Ivan Boudier. Ivan, I'll let you take it away. Thanks, Suda. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Good to be here. Full day already. Wow, uh, what a journey already. And really pleased to, to be with those great panelists. Um, so, um, how are we going to do this today? Um, I will let you introduce yourself and Anna, Cyril, uh, and Jean-Marie. Andrew is on the way, I guess, so we're going to join you, us uh, in a few seconds. And then we're going we're gonna to jump into a conversation about convergence, hybridation. Let's call it uh, yeah, the intersection of uh, in real life, uh, live experience and online experience. Anna, uh, you first. Uh, welcome, and really glad to have you uh, in this panel. Can you explain your role uh, and talk about uh, Olympic Prod? Yeah, Th well, first, thank you for having, having me with you. I'm very, very happy to be part of this uh, great uh, session. Um, I'm working for Olympia Production. I'm head of marketing and, and business development and innovation within Olympia Production. Uh, Olympia Production is uh, the live structure uh, of the Vivendi group. Uh, uh, we're part of Vivendi with, uh, for those who do not know, Vivendi is an um, entertainment, international entertainment group, which includes many assets such as um, universal music, uh, venues. Uh, we have uh, the mythical venue uh, that is the Olympia in Paris. We also have ticketing a company that is T-Ticket and uh, the pay and free TV media group called Canal Plus uh, that I will talk about later because they have been uh, involved also in, uh, in live streaming. So Olympia Production is um, a, a live structure that is working with music artists, with stand-up artists and also has a uh, assets of festivals. We have more than seven festivals within France and work with uh, the largest uh, free festival in the world that is called Mawazin and is based in Morocco. Um, that's for me for the moment. I'll talk about <laughs> Thanks, our Anna. experience in life a little bit later. Thanks, Anna. It's, it's so good to have you because we will have a real, uh, let's say, feedback from the field uh, about this very topic uh, because, yeah. Uh, uh, what does it take to produce and market and monetize uh, those uh, hybrid content moving forward? And you, Cyril, uh, you're on the next on my on my right. Yes, uh, uh, based in France, also uh, welcome. Yeah, based in Paris. Thank you, thank you, Yvon. Thank you for uh, having me on 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 this panel. Uh, very happy to be here. Uh, hello to everybody. Um, <clears throat> I'm uh, I'm Cyril Zajac. I'm uh, the founder of uh, OmniLife. Um, so we're a, a startup uh, based in uh, Paris. 
And uh, uh, very simply speaking, we create an interactive experience in video where uh, we put the user in the director's chair and let them uh, pick and choose uh, their own way of uh, viewing the program. We give them all the camera angle and they can pretty much view the, the live show uh, in their living room um, using our technology and, and be the director. But really the, the way you have to look at it is uh, at OmniLive we transform the video object into an IoT uh, component where all the data that we're gonna be gathering will enable to the user to create a more pertinent, a more personalized experience. And on the producer side, all this uh, uh, data we are gathering on the, on the user level um, will enable them to uh, detect where you have a cold or a hot angle uh, and um, um, activate uh, unshorn mechanism or upsell, cross-sell uh, mechanism. Um, and that's essentially what we do at OmniLive. And with the pandemic, um, we've been doing a lot of live stream. Um, we, we see ourselves uh, as an enabler. So that, that means that we're not a ticketing company. We're not a platform. We're really here to bring our technology to a, a, an already existing ecosystem and augment it. Um, we did roughly around 50 live show over the year, um, which is not uh, bad for a, a company our size. And uh, we are accelerating right now. We, we, we are at Jazz à Vienne uh, tonight. We'll be simultaneously at Jazz à Jean les Pins. Uh, we'll be doing like three live shows simultaneously tonight. Um, so yeah, the summer's gonna be great. And hopefully the end of the year. Exciting. It's good to say exciting in that period because we are all yeah. in a re resilient mode, but also in a positive, uh, let's say, moving forward mode. Uh, Jean-Marie, uh, welcome also. Uh, uh, <laughs> can, can you tell us uh, about Benzin Town, but also your role and, and maybe a little bit of your journey to uh, to to what you you what you do right now at Benzie Town? Sure, thank you, Ivan, for for having me. Thank you for the invite. Glad to be here. Um, so I'm Jean-Marie Karadek. I'm heading up Benzie Town in Europe. Uh, Benzie Town is a US-based company. We we are a leading live music recommendation platform. Uh, we have 60 million users registered right now um, globally um, as well as uh, 600,000 artists using our tools mostly to connect with the fans um, so Benzin Town helps artists and fans connect uh, it also helps fans to never miss a show um, so it's an app it's a web platform um, and it's also an advertising platform on, on, on another field um, so we we mostly operate on the live music uh, market uh, and since last year uh, we had uh, um, let's say a, a strong fruit footprint uh, on the live stream um, as uh, as we yeah we, we, we try to uh, to help artists um, keep connected with their with their audience but I guess we'll discuss this further. Great, thanks, thanks Jean-Marie. Uh, what I propose to you as a as a, as a path for for the conversation as a framework, I, I, I would love to explore what conversions means in let's say three dimensions first the fan experience then because i think it starts with uh, usage uh, and then the production like behind the scene what does it take to make that work and also uh, at the end not only monetization but a value chain conversation if we have the time meaning uh, from Benzin Town to Omni Life to uh, also uh, you, you at Olapian Pod with Canal uh, Viri what are the different uh, layers uh, in the ecosystem that are currently uh, building up that new ecosystem of uh, hybrid, uh, hybrid uh, uh, live performance? So let's start with the fan experience because, uh, and with you, uh, Anna, um, I had the chance to experience uh, one of the first, let's say, huge uh, e uh, online events, which was uh, Amat Pokora in, in France, and now you are already uh, doing hybrid e events. Uh, and. Can you tell us the process um, to, let's say, not only analyze, but how do you approach fan experience from your from your core uh, expertise at Atelier La Pavot? Because you know how to do shows, but what does it take to embrace new new way to create new ex fan experience? And how do you observe or yeah tackle that uh, from well, yeah, when it comes to hybrid hybridation? Well, first. Uh, I'd like to be very humble about my experience uh, in live streaming 
um, I think we're still in, on the beginning of a, of a way that will, that will move and, and constantly change. Um, from the experience we had uh, in live streaming that we started to do uh, in 2020, of course, as uh, Cyril was saying, uh, 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 through the pandemic, we had to, to see what we could do for our artists to continue to perform and live streaming was a fantastic tool to do that, to do so. Um, to, to come to the fan experience, um, I would say that the first point is that comes is the artist himself. Uh, how comfortable the artist is in interacting or not interacting with the users. Um, the experience that the artist will have in performing in live stream is very different to the experience they have uh, on stage in real. And some artists are very comfortable with it, like the experience we had with Matt Pokora, uh, which is, uh, who is, uh, 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 I would say, a, a very famous French uh, artist. And he is very used to cameras because he has done a lot of TV shows before. And um, some artists, other artists, that have experienced live streaming and that have experienced interaction with users were had, a, a, I would say, a first bad experience with that because they were not comfortable with that. They, had, they did not know how to use the different cameras. So that is to say that to decide about what the fan experience will be, it needs to be very close to the artist's universe and experience itself. Because uh, it's great to say that live streaming um, is an experience that is unique, that can bring interaction with the fans. But again, to make sure it is successful, it the artist himself has to be comfortable with that. So that's the first, I would say, the first feedback from the various live streaming shows we have done within Olympia production. Um, the second one is that sometimes, depending on what the storytelling will be, sometimes you, 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 it's better to work on a live streaming that will have a very strong virtual asset with uh, augmented reality, with virtual reality, and maybe there, interaction will not be so essential. And on the other shows that we will do, for example, in venues, within venues, where the, the live streaming and the show will be more classic to what we're used, interaction will really make sense. So I would not say that there is one rule. There are many different ways of, on, in doing live streaming. And it starts from what the storytelling will be what the artist wants to share with his fans. It's exactly the same process, in fact, when you start working on a tour. When you start working on a tour, the first exchanges will be with the artist. What do you want to say? What do you want to show? How do you want to interact with your public? And in fact, live streaming is exactly the same. And then technology comes into play, but more as a, as a way to express those, uh, those story, to make that storytelling into life. Uh, yeah, yeah. Talking about technology, uh, uh, um, I don't want to make to make publicity to OmniLife, but I must say that we have worked with OmniLife on 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 different live stream uh, live streaming, and it's a fantastic tool for the users to have a unique experience. As Thierry was saying, um, uh, it's great for the users because they are not just seeing the show; they can play with it and they can see the various angles of the show. And for us as producers, it was fantastic to, to be able to give that opportunity to the users. So, um, so I mean, we, we love only life. <laughs> oh, so uh, let's give the mic to, to Cyril before uh, also uh, asking the question to Jean-Marie about usage, because thanks to your global audience, you have, I guess, super in interesting insights to share with the audience, but Cyril, not only talking about the technology, more about maybe some real, real, real uh, use case, uh, the one you're, you're going to experience tonight. Uh, can you tell us about those festivals? How does it work? How do you bring that as a, let's say, 
an extra on top of the of the in real life experience uh, and how do you work with the teams maybe uh, yeah um well thank you anna I, I i don't know what else to say thank you very much um um yeah uh, I, I think that um, um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a dramatic situation what we're uh, living right now with COVID uh, and especially in the music industry, but it, it's also a very stimulating, intellectually speaking, a very stimulating situation because um, the audience is maturing very fast and, and we feel we are very much into, uh, uh, we're, uh, into action, but more into reaction to uh, what they are giving us as, as feedbacks. Their expectations are, are growing and are very fast. They, they want uh, um, a new tool, new features, new functions. Uh, they want quality, of course. Uh, they want to be closer uh, to the artist. Um, and um, um, usually what, what happened, and, and Anna is totally right. I mean, we, we, we consider ourselves as an, uh, an enabler and we enable the, the uh, uh, artistic experience, but the technology ultimately has to disappear. It has, it has to be seamless. Uh, if you're using technology, it has to disappear and or tell a story. Um, if it doesn't do that, then the challenge is, is not accomplished. Um, most of the time, what, uh, what um, uh, promoters or artists are, are looking for is to create that proximity between them and their distant audience. Um, what we hear in, in when, when we interview uh, a user who have a, a bug a ticket to see a live stream is that they they don't want to have the same experience that in real life um, they want to have close-ups uh, they don't care so much about the wide angles uh, they want to be on stage um, they want to be able to talk with each other um, we even have use case where um, um, on classical music some user requested that they had comments uh, somebody who had the knowledge and who could actually give them trivia yeah, about the composer, about the interprets, about um, so it, it, these new new use cases are, are are coming, and and like Anna, I think that we haven't seen the end of it. Um, from the festival uh, um, perspective, um, right now, uh, in, at least in France, um, um, most of the festival can't um, um, have their full uh, audience. Um, um, and, and they have to rely on, on um, uh, another experience if they want to uh, either consolidate their revenue or, or, or keep positioning their, their uh, brand uh, so that they, uh, the user don't forget them. Because I mean, uh, the first uh, year, a lot of festivals just canceled. Um, but right now we're like in the second uh, year where some of the festival uh, mm -hmm. actually canceled. We don't know what's gonna happen in September. So definitely um, live stream seem to be like a nice alternative to keep spreading the good word and say, well, we're still here. We, we have artists, we, we do things. Um, there is also something very interesting too. I mean, uh, not so long ago, I was talking with a director, um, uh, the director of a festival and, and he was telling me, um, I personally don't like live stream. And, and I, I sure won't uh, uh, buy a ticket to, to a live stream. But me and my audience, that's two different things. And I know that they are requesting it. And if they request it, um, it's, it's, it would be a nice thing to try to experiment it and to see how we could benefit from it. Uh, because that we know that the audience that will, uh, when things will become better, uh, our audience will come back. Yeah. But there is another audience, there is another one. And, uh, one that doesn't have the habit to come to our festival, but probably he's too far away or doesn't exactly. have the budget to come uh, uh, to, to see us. And, and there is a necessity today to bring our festival to them. Yeah, this is uh, an important that, uh, series. Yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, this is exactly uh, the question I was about to ask also to Jean-Marie, uh, because uh, Benditan is not only uh, this global platform uh, where uh, you are also kind of ahead of, or you were let's say ahead of the curve when it when the pandemic came came out to 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 jump into the live stream uh, let's say market but also you released a bunch of research and and share a lot of insights regarding adoption fan experience and the, the willing to pay can you share a little bit of of, uh, of those key insights from Ben's in town uh, about really yes the fan the fan perspective of live streaming what what do they expect how they consume 
and maybe the kind of different, not segmentation, but live streamers are the same than the one you used to, to see before pandemic, or they are a complement? Uh, yeah, all of those questions uh, for you, Jean-Marie. That, that's, that's a lot of, quen of I know questions the one. <laughs> but yeah, Insights I like, about I the fans. I mean, first, uh, and it's, it's aligned with what, uh, with what Anna said before, I think, um, for, I mean, the value of live streaming for artists so far we've identified is, is creativity. Um, we, we give them the keys of uh, a new setup and they can present something that they didn't present before. It can be back catalog, it can be um, like a, a new way of playing, it can be anything different from what they show on stage. This is, in my opinion, the, the artist, the biggest artist value, uh, more than economic, more than promotion, it's really creativity. On the audience side, we've realized that at, at first, uh, live streaming was targeting um, the core audiences, uh, the core fans of the artists. But in fact, the people who actually uh, came uh, and came again and were here at every uh, live stream were people who actually could not always access to a festival or, or, or a concert. So it's more a demographic reason um, because a concert is, can be expensive, a festival can be expensive, so far it's very far. Uh, it, it, the artist you like is not coming to your town. So live streaming is a way to give access to everyone to live music. And this is this is the real value of it at the moment. And this is also, by extension, the value to artists. It's, it's a way to reach a fans that you cannot reach um, when, when you're playing in, in towns. Um, so we, we saw that first uh, on, on data. Um, so then, to, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Steve. Then, then um, so during this year, I'm, I'm not talking about right now because I think right now is a, uh, is, kind of specific moment we, we have uh, like insane figures of uh, ticket clicks I think I think we had uh, in May we had between 250,000 and 550,000 per day of ticket clicks so wow. May was a very specific month back to live yeah. uh, but this this doesn't mean that live stream won't keep going um, as I said it, it will it will always help artists uh, reach uh, another audience and help artists do something different. Um, in terms of uh, figures, we, we do have, over the last year, uh, during a survey, uh, we saw that 75% of the, live the, the artists we talked with actually live streamed the performance. So it's, it's three it's quarters, a yeah, yeah. it's a lot. Then uh, it's, it's three 75%, 75% of the fans um, we, we we talked with tuned in a live stream. So again, we so Benzin Town is very focused on concert goers. Um, all our audience go to concert, but we can see that all these concert goers, or most of them, uh, gave a try to live streams. Um, then we released Benzin Town Plus, which was uh, um, which is actually a platform uh, on a subscription basis for live streams, and we saw that. What, what we didn't control uh, and what we didn't expect is the creation of a community. We saw people uh, coming day one, day two, day three, and, and they were there like every night we were live streaming uh, uh, content. And uh, they recognized each other and they asked in the chat, were you here last night? So we, we saw that was also an opportunity for artists to uh, keep gathering their communities. So that, that was, yeah, that was something pretty strong. And then uh, we saw that 75% of the stream we promoted on the platform were uh, from artists that are not like the biggest one. Most of them had less than 10,000 fans on the platform. Um, so that means that everyone, basically everyone, uh, gave it a, a, a try. Uh, and a very specific memory I have is we, we did a stream on our Twitch channel at the very beginning with uh, Alice and moi. She's a French indie singer, new signing of Sony. Um, she, she released at that time her very first EP. And yeah, basically we promoted it on our platform. So a lot of uh, US fans, people uh, in Asia, people everywhere across Europe. And she sings in French and her English is not that good. 
and she broadcasted it in her room with a very very uh, bad setup in terms of uh, in terms of video but the thing it was so authentic uh, and uh, that that people um, everywhere around the world even though they did not understand what she was thinking uh, singing and, and saying were very very encouraging so we saw something very positive uh, through live streams, exactly the same vibe that you can see in a concert, actually. Um, but in a different way, in, in a digital, on that one, I guess, it was digital specific, right? Uh, um, and for, for the three of you, because I think this is a big question for, let's say, for everyone, uh, for the artists, for the fans, and for the industry, is uh, convergence and imbridation, will it be about every not every, but the, most of the live concerts going for real, having their digital extension, and or having a uh, live stream, on, uh, let's say, in between tours to with another format, with an extensive format, with a more creative format, as also a way to artists to be more direct with fans on new platforms, including gaming and, and Twitch, and also as a way to keep engagement super high and and also makes a connection in terms of marketing. Uh, maybe it will be both, but short term, uh, maybe Anna, you, you can uh, you can tell yeah. us about your current experience because on the paper it's great yeah, to do absolutely. hybridation, but it's not that easy to to monetize or to make uh, to make it work, right? Uh, yes, absolutely. We see we see two, two I would say two different ways. I mean, two different approaches, and depending again on the objective you have, uh, either you 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 want to do a ticketed uh, uh, event and it can be either hybrid or, or live streamed only but uh, if it is a ticketed event uh, we have experienced that before you do you sell the tickets for the live stream but you can also sell the broadcasting of the event to uh, a, a TV that will be broadcasting uh, the event a few months later and it gives you again uh, additional revenues uh, but what also we see now is that live streaming can be seen as a fantastic marketing and promotional tool for the artist tour itself. I'll give you quickly two examples that are the most recent ones. The first one is, <coughs> uh, I don't know if you know, Sabaton. Oh, yeah. Sabaton is a, <coughs> is a full uh, metallic uh, uh, group. We are um, uh, the, the local promoter for Sabaton in France. And what the agent uh, asked is that for all the ticket holders, those that have already bought the ticket, they could have a free live stream show. The tickets are for the 2022 tour, but Sabaton is performing um, at the festival in Serbia called Exit Festival this week and it will be broadcasted and it will be live streamed for either the ticket holders or people that are buying merch on Sabaton's website, they can access to the live stream. Another example is Marina and the Diamonds, same, uh, she had a live stream before, previously, and for those who had seen and bought the live stream, there was a pre-sale for the tour. So we see that live streaming is, is again, I'm saying it's, we're just at the beginning. I cannot tell you where it will go exactly. We are facing a quite um, tricky period right now, right now. And Jean-Marie is right. It's, it's a strange period because it's summer. The real live events have reopened, even though it's still not easy to sell even those, I must say because of the sanitary pass problematics. It's not, everybody is not just coming back to all the live events as we were expecting. So this is one challenge. And the other challenge, uh, if we come back to live streaming, is that this period right now is complicated to sell live streams. And even I would say, and again, I'm a, I'm a real believer in live streaming and I'm a re real supporter and Olympia production was the first one in France to do live streams, uh, ticketed live streams. Nevertheless, it, there are a lot of challenges today on, uh, when it comes to local markets. If it is an international artist, it's much easier to sell a live streaming. But today, selling a live stream in this specific summer period uh, where people come back to real lives, 
I would say even the artists are difficult to convince right now in France on the local market. So um, again, I do believe in live streaming. Uh, uh, it's going to be in the future a perfect, um, I would say a perfect uh, uh, added value to real concerts. Uh, I do believe that venues, and specifically uh, if I take the venues that we have within Vivendi, I would say, I would talk about the Olympia. Venues like the Olympia tomorrow should be able to suggest to promoters to use uh, the live streaming within the venue for a, as an added ticketing possibility for the, for, for the fans. Uh, but today, I must say that we're not... When, when we do live streaming right now, we're not selling tons of tickets because we're in this very, very challenging period. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it, it, this is quite confusing for everyone, I guess, and people on, uh, yeah. and also the, maybe also the, uh, the problem will be pretty much the opposite when it will be uh, a mature market because the choice will be uh, super vast and the competition will be global. Yeah. Uh, Cyril, I, I have a question for you. Um, because also to be let's let's be optimistic and let's consider this market and you you know uh, everyone in this room I'm a, not a, only a believer I'm the, the analysis I do of the market proved to uh, it shows that it's gonna stay and it's gonna be part of the ecosystem but how do you prepare ourselves as an ecosystem and as an industry to to go there uh, let's say let's talk about let's say because this is a day dedicated to venues and festivals in terms of equipment in terms of uh, expertise in terms of um, let's take the example of um, vips and uh, live nation e uh, the pilot in the us they are equipping as we speak so 60 venues with uh, s live streaming capacity how do you see that uh, this kind of investment now to prepare the future from uh, your perspective as a technologist and an enabler um, well, it's, it's an interesting question. I, I think that um, um, what happened is that in the first few months of, of lockdown, um, everybody started looking around and see how they could keep doing their job uh, when they had no job anymore. Um, so uh, label started at looking at, 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 at making concert, uh, concert promoters were looking at live stream and see, well, that's not my expertise. How should I, you know, um, get competence on that? So every, everything was kind of like we shuffled, uh, I would say. Uh, right now, and I, I definitely agree with Jean-Marie and, and Anna, it's like we are like in the middle of something and, and nobody knows really what's going to happen. So everybody's really happy to go back to venues. Um, but yeah, to me, it's it's a it's a sound strategy uh, because you you can't really lose from investing right now by um, uh, getting equipment into your venues. Um, I think that something is is unclear to a lot of people we we're talking about. But um, um, live stream is not about um, creating. A, um, a great artistic aesthetic object, uh, not as not artistic. Artistic, of course, because you know the artist has to invest it with creativity. But but live streaming is not about creating an aesthetic object. And and Jean Marc said that you know with very poor quality that that French artist was able to actually gain uh, an incredible reach. Um, the digital is not television. Um, when you are uh, doing a live stream there is an asset that you have that you don't have when you do TV or, or cinema is data. Uh, and if, if you can exploit the data correctly, then you can enable a direct to fan uh, strategy, marketing strategy and, and promotion strategy. And, and that has an incredible value. Uh, if you know exactly who is your, who is the user who actually um, sent the most message in the chat, uh, how many times that user came to different concert, and then suddenly you can enable a whole kind of new mechanism. And, and, and so far, not a lot of people we've talked to have grasped that concept and were able to, um, to activate on it. Um, but I recently was talking with a, um, uh, um, an executive in, in a record label, and he was telling me, well, all these kids in, in that go to festival with their phone in their hand, you know, we're, we're going to have to teach them how to use it other than take picture. Uh, so definitely there is a subject there uh, and, and the possibilities are endless, really. Uh, so I think it's sound to equip your venue if you have one. 
um, because the value that you're going to be able to bring to promoters and, uh, and to your venue uh, will be extraordinary. Um, I think that, um, and that's, that's a concept that I, I, I really like, um, I think that if you are a venue, you can create a patrimonial asset, very much like your ERL venue, the real venue, you can probably create a digital patrimonial asset in digital. So that when people will say, well, I've seen such or such band, they will have to tie it with the name of your um, uh, venue. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Going to l'Olympia is not like going to le Bataclan. So when you say, I, I went to see uh, such artists at l'Olympia, it, it says something. So creating that digital asset uh, is absolutely important to me. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's crucial. And also, yeah. uh, this, this is going to be explored in a, in a panel later today uh, about immersive festivals. How also you recreate a, a festival universe into the metaverse. Uh, as a, not only a brand, but as a full experience. Uh, Jean-Marie, uh, we are cl close to the end of the, of the conversation, but uh, I would like to, to, to touch something with you uh, that uh, Cyril al already scratched the surface uh, about. It's um, convergence in terms of um, data-driven approach of marketing, and at Benzintan, you are pretty good at uh, data-driven marketing, helping your clients to reach audiences and such. So. Uh, how do you see the future in terms of convergence or marketing, uh, let's say, approach across live streaming and in real life concepts for producers, artists, and maybe labels also, you see? Uh, how, how will you adapt your marketing tools to, to that new reality across uh, uh, the board? Yeah, I, I, think, I think the, the, the roles are not set yet yeah. uh, about about live streaming. Uh, what, what's sure is that at, at the moment um, labels uh, labels are working hard to to gather the data um, through streaming, through pre sales, pre listening sessions, uh, pre a lot of things. Um, and live streaming is an opportunity for them to create. And, and, and reinforce uh, these conversions uh, because they will have a, a stronger impact uh, into um, into the, the, the live activities uh, of an artist uh, using live stream uh, ticketed or or as as promotion. So my my point here is um, wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> but you but but enable on the way I guess because uh, maybe some. Some people doesn't don't know in the audience uh, what Benzintan is offering as services w when it comes to uh, t targeting audience, marketing, and and CRM and such. So, I guess one of the future of live streaming, maybe Anna, you can talk about that too, is like how to work an audience that came to live streaming to maybe bring them to a venue and th and the way around. Is it something that b is part of? the reason why you, we should or you should invest in live streaming also, also for that the audience not only for just selling tickets but for the sake of the value of the data I, is it the yeah, value yeah. of yeah absolutely absolutely there, there are two reasons uh, to that and again uh, 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 i'm saying we, we are we're facing a lot of challenges but i'm uh, i i totally believe that live streaming is here to stay that's definitely sure uh, uh, and it will evaluate and it will get bigger and bigger. I think there is a real education still to do uh, uh, with, with the users. Um, and also, again, with the artists themselves. Uh, uh, I've, I've witnessed many, many times uh, recently with even big artists, big French artists that were not keen or not comfortable to do live streaming because they were so much willing to go back on stage and meet their public in real that it, this was not currently their priority. To come back to database in, in two seconds, we are working with Canal Plus. Um, uh, Canal Plus has developed themselves uh, a platform uh, because they also have uh, video on demand and they, they know how to, to how to broadcast live streaming and because uh, Canal Plus is also a sister company we're we're setting up bridges together when any ticket for live streaming installed to see how we can then promote the tour 
uh, uh, respecting, of course, the RGPD, which is a big subject for a session apart. <laughs> But yeah. yes, absolutely. It's also absolutely. a data. It's also a data subject. So we have two minutes left. Uh, uh, let's take that time for some kind of inspirational uh, last uh, last ideas. Um, going back to the artist, uh, and I'm really glad to hear that when we talk about convergence, we talk about the artist and the fan uh, at the core. Um, what kind of new technology in front uh, is will enable? Uh, a better artist experience com uh, moving forward. Uh, I've seen a lot of things uh, around sound, the feedback from the crowd, like what or what do we miss in terms of technology and, and, and feature to make the artist experience greater than today, just in front of a, of a green screen? Uh, and anyone wants to share that? I think Andrew would have to tell us a lot of things about that, Melchior, who is working with Bjork, but what can expand the artist experience also to make the live streaming a, a, vibrant, a vibrant experience for the artist. If I may, just to, in two seconds, uh, as a producer and, uh, and promoter, uh, what we have experienced is maybe more to say that there are many, many, many players today yeah. uh, uh, when it comes to live streaming. There are many players that need to be involved. And sometimes for us producers, uh, it's, it's a little bit confusing. Uh, 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 because there are many new technologies and I would say there are many new players almost every week and sometimes it's difficult to know what to use so we always come to what's our priority and also what in terms of business may work because technology is great but it costs a lot of money <laughs> and yeah, at the sure. end it comes also to the a good good uh, equilibration within the business model so that's my my um, yeah, it's an my import, testimony as a person. It's an important point, Anna, because also you need to keep the price of the tickets pretty accessible yeah. still. So you you cannot afford to to spend like a huge technology. Uh, Cyril, uh, maybe some few words about that. That what what kind of technology you are exploring without spoiling any uh, secrets? But uh, what what. what um. No, we um, so so uh, we gi we already give the, uh, the the ability to the user to actually change their visual point of view. Uh, we recently integrated a, a multi-track audio multi-track um, uh, function that also enables you to uh, change your audio point of view. Uh, that means that you can actually offer fans uh, either augmented sound, but maybe a different perspective uh, of the sound of the concert. Um, uh, again, we, we look at all the features, we can build it on the live in a, uh, uh, with the idea that we give more power to the producer and the artist to editorialize a new kind of experience. So multi-track audio is, is definitely a function that was uh, requested to us and, and we implemented it. And um, uh, we are also working very hard to uh, uh, create a, a feedback line from the distant audience to the, to the stage. Um, um, we usually say that we bring the concert to your living room and, and the next stage for us is to actually bring the fans on stage um, and to incorporate all that into a more visual um, 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 a, a more visual uh, experience for the artist. Um, because so far we've seen artists uh, have like huge screen on stage where they had the chat rolling and they would have to go to the screen and, and go up and down and just doesn't work. Uh, a live show for an artist is a visual experience. So we, we're looking at different ways to actually bring that uh, or actually take away from that screen elements that we could actually bring on stage, uh, visually speaking. Um, uh, and we're close to uh, having like a really nice solution. So Cool, cool. So let's keep in touch then. And, and yeah. uh, uh, last word, uh, at Benzintown, I think maybe from the Benzintown Plus experience, uh, what, are, what are maybe some uh, future developments or some kind of features you're looking at to enhance uh, the, the user experience? Not like futuristic stuff, it could be about social interaction or what, what kind of yeah, new, new, new features are coming uh, uh, soon. That. Um, we are, uh, we, we just launched uh, a self-service um, um, li live streaming um, platform so that allows you through our platform Benzintan for Artists, which is the uh, artist uh, side of the product. Um, so to, um, yeah, broadcast and, 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 and promote your, your own event. Um, so this is new. Um, this is based on the technology we built 
for uh, Benzene Town Plus. Um, I think, uh, which is more from a personal perspective, uh, that the, 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 fu the future uh, it would be very, very interesting um, from an economic standpoint also around that feeling and particularly my, my personal belief that we should, we should push and uh, we, we will push tipsing, uh, which is very, very strong on um, platforms like Twitch, for instance. And um, since live streaming uh, has an unlimited capacity of uh, welcoming fans, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful opportunity for uh, artists and also small artists to make live stream a living. Yeah, this is a great message to also back to the artist. And this day will be uh, the closing panel will be about the artist's vision. So from A to Z, uh, let's say. Uh, and I think, Suda, you cannot <laughs> deny that yeah, artists are core to the process, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and it's super, super interesting hearing about all the different perspectives within the live streaming potential. Um, and Anna, as you know, a touring artist for 25 years, wow, we're desperate to get on the stage, you know, we're absolutely <laughs> gagging to, to do a live show. And uh, I think, you know, the educational element around that for us artists is going to be absolutely key. Um, but yes, Ivan, as you say, we're going to do a panel around this with us artists talking about <laughs> this and the rest uh, at exactly. the end of the day. Thank you so much, panel. Thank really you. Thank you. Really, really interesting. And keep the ball rolling and keep pushing and let's go back to live anyway. <laughs> OK, thanks. Totally. Thanks so much. OK, moving on to our next panel of the day, uh, a different mm. angle again. We're on to sustainability. So we have Digital Safari on Sustainability, Low-Tech Tips for Ecological Live Music Events. Let's meet our panel after the break. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.